Hi everyone, in this first video of the structure and bonding topic we're going to be talking about the states of matter and by that we mean solids, liquids and gases. If you think that's all a bit too easy for you, stay around till the end of the video when we're going to be talking about heating curves and cooling curves. Make sure you can draw the particle diagrams for the three states of matter. So when you're drawing a solid, make sure all the particles are very close together in nice straight rows and they are actually touching each other. So the particles in a solid have a regular pattern, they're very close together, they vibrate on the spot rather than moving from place to place and there are strong forces holding the particles in that arrangement. The liquid diagram is the most difficult one to draw because you need to show some room between the particles, a few spaces, but as you can see from my diagram, most of the particles are still touching. A common mistake of people drawing this diagram is to draw the particles too far apart. Notice how most of the particles are still touching each other. So this time we've got a random pattern of the particles. There's a little space between the particles. Now the particles can move around slowly and there are only weak forces between the particles. The particles in the gas, as we can see, are once again in a random pattern. There's lots of space between the particles. The particles are moving around fast and now there's no forces between the particles. In terms of the properties of a solid, what can we say about a solid? Well, they have a fixed shape, so the shape doesn't change. They also have a fixed volume. They do not flow from place to place and you cannot compress a solid because the particles are already as close together as they can be. The properties of a liquid, well they have a fixed volume, so if I had a 330 milliliter can of coke and then poured it into a measuring cylinder it would still be 330 milliliters of coke, that won't have changed. But by doing that the shape will have changed, it's gone from a can shape to a long thin shape of a measuring cylinder. So they take on the shape of their container. They do flow, if you knock a liquid over it will flow across your table and they can be compressed a little. Try this with a full water bottle, plastic water bottle. You can squeeze it a little bit because there's that small amount of space between some of the particles. When we look at the properties of a gas, the volume can change. It fills all space available. So if you have some air freshener contained within a small can and then spray it, it will then spread out to fill the size of the room. In doing that, the shape of it can change. It can flow from one place to another and a gas can be compressed a lot because the particles have got a lot of space between them so they can be forced a lot closer together. You must make sure you know the names for the different changes of state. So a solid going to a liquid is called melting, so that could be a solid bar of chocolate melting in the sun. A liquid going to a solid is called freezing. Now that doesn't have to be at zero degrees in a freezer. If you've heated up some chocolate to pour into moulds and allow it to cool at room temperature, it will cool back into a solid, so we still call that freezing. A liquid change into a gas it could be either boiling or evaporation and going the other way from a gas to a liquid that's called condensation. Now a few substances can change straight from a solid to a gas. One example is carbon dioxide and that's used in smoke machines in the theatre. It goes straight from a solid to the gas which is the smoke you can see and that is called sublimation. If something goes the other way from a gas straight into a solid for example, water vapour can be turned into snow at the right temperature, then that's called deposition. We're now going to have a look at a heating curve for water. So imagine we get a beaker of ice on a tripod and gauze and we put a thermometer in the centre of the ice and then we start heating it up with the Bunsen burner and we just leave the setting constant on the Bunsen burner. So we're not changing the amount of energy supplied to the ice and then we could draw a graph of the temperature as time goes on. And you'd expect maybe the ice just to keep getting hotter and hotter as it melts and then turns into water and then when it starts to boil. But actually, as we can see from the shape of the graph, there's times when the temperature 
doesn't go up the temperature remains constant so let's see what's going on here so to start with when it's solid ice the temperature starts to increase as the particles in the ice vibrate faster and faster on the spot the first flat point of the graph the first plateau is when melting is occurring and all the heat energy supplied by the bunsen burner is being used to overcome those strong forces so that the particles can then start to move around once it's turned into a liquid the temperature of the liquid starts to rise again as the liquid particles start moving around faster and faster and then when the next change of state happens and it starts to boil once again the temperature remains constant as it is boiling once it's turned into a gas the temperature of that gas then starts to increase now if this was a heating curve for water we could actually put the some temperatures on here so we know that ice melts at zero degrees and similarly water boils at 100 degrees so it changes from a liquid to a gas at 100 degrees make sure you can label the different parts of a heating curve like this with the changes of state melting and boiling and also where the three states of matter are if we do the opposite experiment and start off with the gas and gradually cool it down to start with the gas starts to decrease in temperature then the first plateau of the graph is where a change of state is happening and we're going from a gas to a liquid so that must be condensation then the liquid cools down as the particles lose kinetic energy and start to move around slower and then the second change of state is where it's turning into a solid so that must be freezing and then once it's turned into a solid the solid then decreases in temperature so once again um, we can put some actual numbers on this so the temperature that a gas changes back into a liquid is the same temperature that it changes from a liquid to a gas so it's at the boiling point so that would be 100 degrees for water similarly the temperature it changes from a liquid to a solid is the same temperature it goes from a solid to a liquid so that would be zero degrees again so once again make sure you can label the different parts of this cooling curve if you found this video useful please remember to like and subscribe also feel free to leave some positive comments in the comments box thank you for watching